Hello and welcome to the fair right now tonight. My name is Jay Ratio and I am your StriveScan facilitator for the evening. Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. So tonight we have six great schools and we are so excited to have you all here, all seeing what we have to offer. There's a couple of housekeeping items I have for you and then we will get right into it. So first off, at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see a Q&A button at the very bottom. That is where you can ask questions to any of our schools at any time, and they will get to you as soon as they can. Now, don't worry, your camera and video, your audio, all are off, so we cannot see or hear you. So no worries there. And just so you know, this is one of many sessions that are happening on later this evening and tomorrow. So if you want to learn about more great schools, feel free to get started and register for more. Also, this presentation is being recorded. So within about one week at strivescan.com forward slash Minnesota, you will be able to get the recording in case there's anything that you might have missed. So we're gonna go ahead and get it started now. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, Carthage College. Go ahead and take it away for us. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Greg Huss. I know the screen says Rocco Lamacchia, but Rocco, couldn't be here tonight. He actually uh, was honored to get a call to referee the National Wheelchair Basketball Championship in Alabama tonight. So he had to split and head down to Alabama. If you're working with him, congratulate him on that. So my name is Greg. I do the same thing that he does here. And uh, I'm going to share my screen and kind of start things out with a quick video, if we don't mind. And so should be able to see this here in just a quick minute. See your future on the horizon? So do we. At Carthage College, we will push you to dive deep, to channel your curiosity, and excel in your chosen field. As you ignite your true potential and start asking the hard questions, you'll find that the answers are just the beginning. That's the moment your purpose comes into view. Some things you just need to see for yourself. We hope you enjoy your visit to Carthage College. All right, so let me just stop sharing. I'm gonna put up a different slide here for everybody. So hopefully you can all see that now. Um, can everybody see the screen with a new, did it go up there? I'm not sure it went up there. Uh, but. So we're located right on the shore of Lake Michigan. And um, hold on, something's going on here. There we go, now I think you can see it. So we're located right on the shore of Lake Michigan and we're right between Milwaukee and Chicago, which is a big advantage for us, not only for fun stuff, but we utilize that for our students for internships and professional careers and things like that. So just an hour north of Chicago, half hour south of Milwaukee. Uh, we're about 2,600 students here and we have students from 38 states and 10 countries. So students come from all over the nation. You'll meet people from all over uh, here on campus. We have over 50 majors and minors. And what's unique is we allow you to kind of explore freshman year jump into your major right away freshman year, or if you're undecided, try things out to see if you actually like them. So by the end of the freshman year, most of our students have a pretty good idea what they wanna major in. If you come and visit, and we hope you do at some point, you'll see that we've spent over $250 million on updating this campus. It's pretty much all new buildings or updated buildings, new science center, new business center. We've got our own Starbucks, a lot of eating options, new residence halls, rec center. You get the idea, it's quite a bit that's out there. We, uh, our students uh, really focus on experiential learning. So for instance, if you wanna be engineering or, or physics, you'll have the option to work directly with NASA. We are the NASA headquarters for the state. If you wanna be pre-med, we're doing graduate level research right away freshman year. If you wanna be a business student, 
We've got our own consulting firms where you go into the uh, in, into corporations and work with them and network and so on and so forth. So you get the idea, it's a real hands-on education. We also have an Aspire program here, which is our career development program that starts freshman year. And you'll have a career coach working with you no matter what you wanna major in for that as well. Uh, if you wanna play athletics, 27 NCAA teams here. We've, uh, we've just upped it a little bit. We're actually starting an esports team as well. So that comes online next year. And um, we also have a big theater music program for sure. We've got a four-year graduation guarantee you'll see on your screen there. So our students aren't in school five or six years. We're getting them through in four. And we also have about $20 million in scholarship money. So please know that's a, a big amount of scholarship money if you're interested in Carthage. I can't give you all 20 million of that scholarship money, but we'll get you as much of that as we possibly can. Some of our biggest areas for majors are definitely the sciences, the business program, uh, things like psychology, the education program, and so on and so forth. So good luck with everybody with your college search. Come on out and see us sometime. We do tours Monday through Friday, and we're also starting up Saturday mornings again now as well. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much there, great to have you here. We are gonna move along to our second presenter with Lake Area Technical College. Come on up, Nikki. All right, hi guys. All right, I was having some technical difficulties, so I apologize. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'm gonna bring up a video here um, to show you a little bit about Lake Area Tech. Hopefully we can get it going. Um, one moment. All right, um, so I'm gonna bring you right over to our website um, so we can take a look at our school. Um, so let's see here. Maybe we can get this going. Oops, got something else going on here. All right. Um, well, if I can get this brought up, <laughs> there's always technical difficulties on all of this, I tell you. Um, all right, so can you all see um, my screen now? Is it sharing? Let's see. You don't see anything yet. You don't see anything? Okay, all right, just a second here. I thought I had this going. Maybe. There we go. All right, should be coming now. Okay, so um, this is our website. Um, so Lake Area Tech runs a little bit different. We are a technical school. So we are, most of our degrees are a one and two year school, um, or you receive either a diploma or associate's degree. Um, we offer 30 plus different programs, um, both on campus and online. Um, you can see a list of our programs here. Um, so we run anything from agriculture, diesel, building trades. Um, we have quite a few healthcare options, nursing. Um, we have online nursing, which is a huge um, program right now, especially with our need in the world. Um, robotics, welding, a lot of those trade programs too. Um, our biggest, uh, I guess I would say strength is that we are a hands-on school. Um, we uh, typically, we run a 20 80 day or 80 20 day so that means that you are in class for about an hour a day the rest of that time is spent out in the shops doing internships and getting some of that hands-on experience um, so that's kind of our difference um, between um, schools um, that's what we kind of uh, push um, is if you're a hands-on learner this is a great school to attend 
Um, you can find most of the information about a specific program right on our website. Um, let's say you are interested in our aviation maintenance program. Um, you can go on and you can check out the costs, um, the course outline, what it's like um, for in a typical day, what you can expect for courses. You can also take a, a, a tour of our shop if you'd like. Um, and everything runs $121 per credit is um, the cost for our, our school. So um, you can check some of those out. Um, so we don't, um, we are different in that we also don't have any sort of housing. We don't have dorms. Um, so we let you kind of have that freedom if you wanna go out and live in a suite or you live in an apartment. We have a lot of housing directly around campus. Um, that are open just to Lake Area Tech students. Um, but it gives you, again, that opportunity to kind of have some of that freedom, pick your roommates um, and see what it's like to live in some different facilities. So um, you can also find some different things on our website as far as basic campus life. We um, have our bookstore, we have our student services, we have a cafeteria, we have caribou coffee, um, all sorts of things um, to basically help you succeed as a student. Um, you can go through our website here and you can take a look and see um, some different things, what might appeal to you. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then, like I said, um, we are, you can apply right on our website um, at lakeareatech.edu. Uh, that is open right now. We are still taking applications. We actually take them through the summer uh, to start next fall. Um, you can apply for financial aid through us. We also are giving away scholarships. Um, our scholarship application is, uh, has a deadline of March 31st. Um, we offer what's called the Build Dakota Scholarship, and you can read up about this uh, as well, but um, this is a scholarship that is open to students that are maybe um, that are want to start at our school and it's a full ride scholarship if you get that sponsorship. So a lot of opportunities, reach out, talk to one of us um, admission reps. You can reach me um, if you need it to tour or just any questions at all. So, all right. Thanks for spending your time with me. <laughs> have a good day. Awesome, thank you so much. Really great to have you here. We are gonna move right along to our third presenter of the evening with McAllister College. Go ahead and take it away for us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Niara Williams. I use the pronouns she, her, hers. And I am a 2018 graduate of and admissions officer at McAllister College. Now, as we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are located in St. Paul, Minnesota on occupied Dakota land. And we make that acknowledgement as a way of, of honoring both the land and its peoples. We are incredibly fortunate to be located in the Twin Cities. And location is often cited as one of the primary reasons why students applied to and ultimately enrolled at McAllister. From an abundance of field research opportunities to internships, we have 17 Fortune 500 companies based here, some of the largest and most reputable medical and scientific facilities uh, in the region, not to mention a vibrant artistic scene where the only place in the US with more theater seats per capita than us is New York City. Um, but to speak to McAllister in and of itself, what makes it so unique among our peer institutions is that this is not the type of location in which you would usually find a small, highly residential, academically rigorous, tight-knit community of a liberal arts college. So you're able to have the best of both worlds in terms of your tight-knit community, but also all of the urban amenities and professional development opportunities that come with living in a major metropolitan area. But what makes our community really special is the student body. And there are some pretty interesting things about the students who come to McAllister. 24% of our student body holds citizenship of a country other than the United States. We have 98 countries of citizenship represented on our campus, 100% of the US states, and that all comes together in a student body of a little over 2000 students. And all of this is able to come together because of the core values that we hold and really lead with as an institution. Those values are internationalism, multiculturalism, service to society, and academic excellence. 
And these figures you see on the screen here are made possible due to McAllister's broad and intentional international representation. But this level of internationalism would not be possible without multiculturalism. And we are a community that really intentionally leans into challenging conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We acknowledge that the work of engaging in diversity, equity, and inclusion is never done and the work of every single person on our campus. But multiculturalism isn't the main way that we necessarily engage with our campus and local communities. Civic engagement is a very big part of what we try to instill in our student body and the wider community as a whole. It's so important that everyone knows that they have the power to make a positive impact, no matter how large or small that impact is or however it manifests because of what we're able to bring to the table. Now for that last core value, academic excellence, probably one of the most important ones to have when you're searching for a college or university. And when it comes to academic excellence, I find it's important to really lean into the fact that we are a liberal arts and sciences focused institution. So we really take pride in a lot of interdisciplinary work that we do that is made possible by the breadth and depth of curricular options that we have, including a plentiful and robust STEM community. A large part of the academic culture at McAllister is really making sure that we're putting forward and instilling in our students a spirit of collaboration rather than competition. We have a lot of very academically talented and driven students and What's incredible is that we're able to see a lot of people work together instead of against each other. Another large part of the academic culture at McAllister are faculty and student relationships. And those are aided in part because of our 10 to one student to faculty ratio. The average class size will be about 17 students and your very first faculty relationship will start during your first semester in your seminar first year course where the professor who teaches you is your very first advisor. But learning also extends outside of the classroom. When I say that being in a metro area has a lot of positives when it comes to what you're able to access in terms of internship opportunities, we have over 200 internship sites within an eight mile radius of campus. And internships are an important stepping stone of the McAllister experience. We usually try to push students toward options that align with our values. For example, um, an internship working with Arts for Social Change or working with the Minneapolis Indian Women's Resource Center. We also have a large focus on community partnership and providing funding support for student-led initiatives and projects. This hands-on learning will also extend globally at times as well. We have a very strong study away program. Um, and when it comes to study away, we have options both domestically and internationally. We have access to over 90 programs across 60 different countries. And in a non-pandemic year, 60% of our juniors study abroad for a full academic semester, meaning a 14 week immersive significant study abroad experience. All majors are welcome and encouraged. But in hearing about all of these amazing opportunities, how do students get here? And that's where admissions and financial aid come in. Something that we've instituted just this year is early action. And it's a lot like early decision in that we are able to give you your result early, but it comes without that same sort of firm commitment that goes with early decision. We're also test optional. That is a permanent decision and you will still be considered for merit scholarships even if you apply test optional. We meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our admitted students. And it just means that you'll be given a comprehensive package um, with some amount of scholarships, grants, loans, and student employment that is tailored to you and defined by your financial aid applications, your FAFSA, and your CSS profile. And that about wraps it up. Uh, again, thank you. My name is Niara Williams from McAllister College. My contact information is up there, but you will find it in the chat in just one moment. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate that. We are gonna move on to the second half of our evening with Milwaukee School for Engineering. Go ahead and take it away for us, Emma. Hi, everybody. I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly here. Uh, my name is Emma Phillips. I'm an admissions counselor at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Can you guys see my screen okay? Everything looks good. Hopefully it's, oh. We sure can. 
Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so like I said, my name is Emma. I work in admissions here. Um, a little bit about the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, you'll see a bunch of stuff on this slide. I'm going to touch on some things. Feel free to read through. I just think these are some things that are um, kind of unique about MSOE. Um, so MSOE, we are located right downtown in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So right in the middle of the city, uh, five blocks from Lake Michigan, um, two blocks from where the Milwaukee Bucks play. Um, it's a really nice place to be a student. Um, we are a pretty small school, so we have about 2,800 students. Um, that kind of also transfers over to academic life here. So you'll see um, some things about our academic life. We have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. So what that means for every 13 students, we've got one faculty member. Um, your average class size here is about 20 students for a non-major class. Labs will always be 10 students or less. You'll hear me talk a little bit about labs in a little bit. Um, that is something that is very unique to MSOE. We are a very hands-on school. Um, some other things that you'll notice on here, um, we are a four-year graduation guarantee school. So all of our programs that we offer, um, they are designed to graduate for you to finish here in four years. Um, I'll talk about the majors in just a moment, but definitely keep in mind, even though we are called the Milwaukee School of Engineering, we are not just an engineering School. Yes, we have lots of engineering, but we also have a very strong nursing program as well as a very strong business program. Computer science all also kind of loop into engineering. We do have computer science as well. Going over to talk a little bit about um, what makes MSOE unique and the majors that we offer, here's a list of our majors. So you'll see we've got pretty much every kind of engineering um, and then those nursing, those business programs that I had discussed as well. Um, something that I love about MSOE, most of what you'll be doing here are labs. Um, that's how you get good at all of these programs is building things, sometimes breaking stuff, um, nursing. The only way you're going to get good is giving practice IDs. Um, we have a simulation hospital here on campus where students can even have their labs. Um, so that is a very big focus for us here. We are a very hands-on practice focused school. So if you are interested in one of these majors, definitely I would recommend um, checking out the kind of education that we have, the labs that we offer. Got one more slide here. Give me one moment. Oh, I went backwards. There we go. Um, so these are just some things that I think are unique about MSOE, not necessarily just academic wise. Um, so we have over 20 NCAA division varsity sports, um, ranging from hockey to tennis, men's and women's. Um, we have varsity, we have club, which is a little bit less competitive. And then we have intramural, which is like beach volleyball for fun with your friends. Um, we have over 99 different clubs and orgs on our campus, ranging from SAE, which is actually what is in this photo right here, students build design and race their own vehicles um, to Greek life, sororities and fraternities here to like a weirdly thriving unicycle club. Um, so it's very rare that you won't find something that you're interested in here on campus. Gaming clubs, we do also have an esports varsity team here as well. In this corner, you'll see a really good example of what you might do in a typical class here. Um, you'll see when you're in those classes, it's a hands-on experience. In all of our classes, the only person teaching is your professor. So we don't allow teaching, uh, uh, teaching assistants on our campus. All of the faculty here on campus are required to have seven to 10 years of experience in the field before they come to teach at MSOE, which means your mechanical engineering professor, he worked at the field maybe at Milwaukee Tool. He's able to really tie everything together to how it affects him, how it affected him when he was in the field. Um, you can see over here, we've got a really great shot of our campus. We're located right downtown, right in the middle of Milwaukee. So there's always stuff to do. I'll tell you, I've lived in Milwaukee for five years and I've yet to do everything, that's for sure. So it's a lot of fun um, here on our, in our city. Um, we also do have, again, downtown housing available for all students, underclassmen and upperclassmen. We don't require upperclassmen to live on campus, uh, but we do have that option if you'd like it. Um, talking a little bit about just next steps, process, financial aid, because that's really what's going to get you in the door, right? Every single one of our students receives some sort of financial aid here, um, from academic scholarships to scholarships if you've been on a robotics team or taken an engineering class in high school, really a wide range. So we definitely do offer lots of financial aid here. Got one more slide here. 
Um, so our application is still open. If you're interested in applying, um, you can go to that link. It's totally free. There's no essay required. We know our students, we know engineers. <laughs> um, so feel free to apply. Um, we do have more virtual sessions specifically geared towards MSOE about different majors or things like that. We are also open for in-person visits. All of our visits, you get to walk through all of the labs. You can even eat here in our dining commons. Um, so if you're interested in engineering, if you're interested in MSOE, I would highly recommend um, signing up for some sort of visit. You can meet with us, you can meet with professors, really whatever you need. Um, otherwise, I will be posting my information in the chat as well. If you need anything, if you have any questions about MSOE, engineering in general, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Emma. Glad to have you here. Next on our list is going to be University of Oregon. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Bottomore. I am an admissions counselor at the University of Oregon. I just wanna thank you for joining us this afternoon, evening, and I really appreciate taking time out of your busy schedules. I am a proud alum of the university, so I graduated in 2019, so I can definitely answer any questions about the student experience. But just like everyone else, I do have a presentation for you all today. To kick things off, I want to do a little bit of a land acknowledgement in the sense that we are located in Eugene, Oregon, which is located on Kalapuya Ilihi, the traditional homelands of the Kalapuya people. Following peace treaties between 1851 and 1855, the Kalapuya people were actually dispossessed of their indigenous homeland and they were forced to move over to the coastal, coastal reservations in Western Oregon. Today, their descendants come from the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde community, as well as the Confederated Tribes of the Sletz Indians of Oregon. So before any campus tour, before any campus event, we definitely want to acknowledge that we are located on Kalapuya Ilihi and we want to honor their contributions they have made to the state of Oregon and to our So you might be thinking, Oregon, Midwest, how am I going to get to Eugene? There are many different opportunities, including daily one-stop flights on Alaska, American, Delta, and United, and United. But there are two airports, one in Eugene, so right near campus, and then there's also one in Portland, Oregon, and that's about a two-hour drive. So this is your geography lesson of the day. So we're right on the western central part of the state of Oregon. So we're about an hour drive away from the Oregon coast and we're about an hour drive away from the Cascade Mountains. So if you wanted to go skiing, snowboarding, hiking, or even go the other direction and you go surfing, walk along the beach, or even roast some marshmallows over on bonfire, you can definitely do that. So we're right in the middle of so many amazing opportunities to go and explore the state of Oregon. This is a picture of our campus. We're about a 295 acre campus. You can get from one side of campus to the other in about 10 to 15 minutes and it's ex easily accessible to most, if not all students. But I just wanted to show you, we are nestled right in the beautiful with Willamette Valley and there's a lot of greenery to take place right in the city of Eugene. So why the University of Oregon? So I wanted to give you an instance of what our campus looks like population wise. We are a middle to large size university where we have around 23,000 students. And of these 23,000 students, roughly a little less than 19,000 are undergraduate population. So we're really focused in that undergraduate experience. We have students coming from all 50 states as well as about 100 countries. And so we give students the opportunity to connect with one another who may share ident same identities and experiences, but also learn from those who are, come from different backgrounds. We've been ranked as one of the top 50 public institutions and there's a lot of factors and reasons what goes into this US News and World Report. But one of the biggest reasons is that we are a part of the Association of American Universities or the AAU. And this is where we do undergraduate and interdisciplinary research. And so a lot of students at the undergraduate level get that experience working with faculty members who receive grants and fundings to perform top tier research. We have 168 programs that students can choose from, and it's all through our schools and colleges. So as you can see, these are all the ones that we have. College of Arts and Sciences is our biggest one, where it makes up about 60% of our university. Some of the notable majors in there include some of our natural sciences, including human physiology, biology, chemistry, marine biology, psychology. We have international studies, political science, English. So we have a huge portion of our students are within the College of Arts and Sciences. We have the College of Business where students can pursue business administration or the School of Accounting. 
We have the College of Design, Architecture, Product Design, Art and Technology, a lot of different opportunities to pursue your creative outlet. College of Education, if you're interested in pursuing being an elementary, middle school or high school teacher, counselor, social worker, School of Journalism and Communication, Journalism, Advertising, Media Studies, Public Relations, School of Music and Dance, where you can perform whether you play an instrument, sing or dance. School of Law is a graduate program, so you get your JD through here. So it's not what you are intending to do once you first attend college, but this is something that you can attend after you graduate with your bachelor's. And then we even do have an honors college. Another academic way you can be involved on campus or I guess off of campus is studying abroad. And we have more than 300 programs in 80 countries to choose from and a quarter of our students actually study abroad. 300 clubs and organizations that students can be a part of, whether these are academic based, maybe these are just general university and clubs and organizations, or maybe these are identity and cultural based. A lot of opportunities to really shape and mold what your experience is at the University of Oregon. And it is a live on requirement for all students to live on campus their first year. I highly recommend doing your research because you're gonna be the one to know the most about which environment you're gonna thrive the most in. And then we do have career services to connect students with 415 plus companies, agencies, firms to really connect you with a job perspective or even a graduate per perspective or a graduate school perspective moving forward. So applying to the U of O, three ways to apply, the Common App Coalition or the Oregon application. We don't have a preference, it's whatever is easiest for you. This is what we consider, we're a holistic review process. So we look at you as an academic, but we also look at you outside and we look at your personal statement, which is just 650 words. Here are some of your deadlines, early action, which is different than early decision, which is your non-binding one. And then here are some of the scholarships that we have for our students. Definitely do a little bit of research about our scholarship opportunities. And this is my contact information. Please give me a call, send me an email. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that come up. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryan. We are gonna move on to our last and final presenter of the evening with University of Strathclyde. Go ahead and take it away, Shannon. Thank you very much. So I'm Shannon from the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland. We are located in the largest city in Scotland. Glasgow's about a million people. So still big in terms of kind of US cities. Um, we are literally across the pond. So if you're thinking about going as far as Oregon, maybe go the other direction across the pond to the UK. We've got six universities in the city itself, so it is very much a student orientated city. There's lots of student discounts and lots of activities for students. And the university itself is very much in the heart of the city center. We are known as one of the friendliest cities around the world, and it is definitely true. The only problem with the Glaswegian is that you can't get rid of them once they start chatting to you. They will talk your ear off forever. Really the friendliest people you could ever meet. But we're very well placed for traveling to the rest of um, the cities in the UK as well. We're about four hours on the train to London, just about 45 minutes on the train to Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. And if you want to go up and explore the highlands in Scotland, it's just about an hour and a half on the train. Here's some pretty pictures of our city. We're also known as one of the greenest cities in the UK. Lots of parks in and around the city and of course the beautiful countryside just outside the city as well. Just to show you where we are in the city then, the campus itself is actually quite contained. You can walk around the whole thing in about 10 or 15 minutes. The student accommodation is located right in the middle of campus, which makes it really nice in the morning if you've got a 9 a.m. lecture and you're running late because you can get to class really in just about five or 10 minutes. The main train stations in the city center, uh, Queen Street Station and Central Station are just about a 10 minute walk from the campus. And again, jumping on a train there will take you really any place in the UK that you want to go. This is just an aerial shot of our campus and we're actually doing quite a bit of renovation um, just now. So the bit in the middle is going to get even greener um, in the next couple of months. 
We were founded a very long time ago, so 1796, and are known as the place of useful learning. So what you're using, what you're learning in the classroom through your lectures will very much be applied in the real world as well once you go off and have a career. The skills are and the degree programs that you'll learn as part of the degree are very much designed with companies um, in order to prepare students for the working world. We are a large university. We have about 22,000 students overall, about 15,000 undergraduate students and students from 100 different countries around the world. So very international. If you look at the US News and World Report for US universities, then in the UK, normally you'd look at the Times Higher Education rankings. Um, and we've won University of the, War of the Year in 2019 and also in 2012. And we're the only UK university to win this award twice. We do have a history of welcoming American students onto our campus. We currently have over 100 US students on our campus studying at various levels. And our founder, John Anderson, used to accompany Benjamin Franklin on his visits to Scotland. So lots of history with our campus and Americans. We have four faculties or colleges, as you might call them in the, in the States, engineering, science, humanities, and social sciences, and our Strathclyde Business School, which is triple accredited. We have over 200 different degree programs, so lots of different subjects um, to study. We are four-year undergraduate programs, so other parts of the UK, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland offer three-year undergraduate degree programs, but in Scotland, the undergraduate programs are four years. And in fact, many of the East Coast universities were founded by Scotsmen, which is why you'll see such a similarity in the systems. We also offer integrated master's degrees, which include a four-year undergraduate degree and then a one-year master's after that. In terms of tuition fees, we're highly competitive in comparison to US universities with our degree programs ranging from about 22,000 US dollars to 31,000 US dollars. We do offer a good number of scholarships as well. Um, in terms of cost of living, as uh, in the UK, Glasgow is one of the cheaper cities to live in, which is good news for students. And we do have that on-campus student accommodation. All of the bedrooms, interestingly, are single study bedrooms. So unlike the US where you may share with another person or two or three people, all of our accommodation is individual student accommodation, which is quite nice. You will then share a communal kitchen, dining room, living room with other students, but you get your own room for your own studies. We've just done up our sports center. So hopefully we're on par with what many US universities offer. If you're into working out, you will not be short of uh, machines to use or classes to take while on the campus. And as you'd expect from a large university, we have over a hundred different clubs and societies on offer. So great opportunity to get involved on the campus. There's also student support services, disability services, and other student services available on the campus as well. So we've got lots of information just for students, uh, American students on our website, and my contact details are just at the bottom there. Thanks very much. Awesome, thank you. I am now going to share my screen and I'm gonna ask all of our panelists to bring their video back on and I'm gonna ask you all a question here. All right, so what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And Carthage College, would you like to go first in answering this? Yeah, I can answer that. Thank you for the question. And um, actually, I've been through this as a parent four times myself. I've got uh, four kids. My youngest is a freshman in college, so two current college students and uh, two recent graduates. My my oldest son uh, said to me, Dad, uh, I want to go look at some colleges. So we toured schools in four states. I would say get out there and tour schools. You really have to, to go check out the schools. We had uh, some schools he liked better than others because some were he thought were more friendly. Some he was like, Dad, you know, people are looking at me funny. I feel like an outsider. Um, try to connect with a professor if you can in a program you might be interested in. 
we had at least two schools that he was really excited to go see based on his research online and get there. And he says, dad, I don't want to get out of the car. Just keep driving, you know? So it's important to get out there and see your colleges and then ask yourself questions like, how are you going to learn at that school? Who are you going to learn from? A big one is what's the location going to do for you? I see a lot of people overlook that one uh, for internships as well as fun stuff. Gotcha. Great advice there. Lake Area Tech, what do you have to add? Yeah, um, yeah, he definitely made some good points. That's exactly what I would say is come and visit the schools. Um, you need to get a feel, um, see what it's like. Um, you know, it's no different than going shopping and trying out a pair of shoes. You got to try these things on so you can um, see if it fits you. Um, because you just never know. Uh, the other thing too um, is look at what you want to do, how you are as a learner, um, you know, what's important to you. Do you, um, you know, if obviously going into a medical field or something, you're going to spend a little bit more time um, at a school, um, whereas maybe it's not necessary to go for four years or six years, um, you know, and so kind of decide um, and how you are as a learner. Are you a hands-on learner or are you more of a book learner? So that's important. Absolutely. We're going to move right along to Niara with McAllister. What do you have to add to this conversation? Um, I think that both Nikki and Greg have made great points. I think it's really important to think of overall fit in a lot of different ways. You want to be somewhere where you can be happy for four years, but you also want to recognize that college is a stepping stone to be able to advance with the rest of your life. So do you really want to have a liberal arts degree? Do you want to study something really specific? Do you want a bachelor of science? Are you, do you feel like you're not ready? It's totally fine to take a gap here or take some classes at a community college to be able to figure things out before you make a big investment and a big decision. And sometimes the things that you want to do don't require a four-year degree. For that reason, technical college is a great option for people who want to pursue specific trades or specific skills. But in any case, you want to ultimately become a lifelong learner and find a place that has turned you into a person who you are proud to be. Beautiful, awesome. And Milwaukee School for Engineering, what do you have to add to this? I have two things, two pieces of advice that I would like to give. So of course, tour, go tour if you can. It's hard in a pandemic, but if they're open for it, sign up for those visits. Um, I think I got probably the best advice I've ever heard from a, a high school counselor who came to visit uh, MSOE one day. And she told me that if she has students that are interested in certain universities, she'll actually tell them to just go to campus. Don't necessarily register for a formal tour or maybe before or after your formal tour, sit, sit down somewhere and just look around. Um, look at the students. Do people say hi to you? Do they just ignore you? Is it really busy? Is it more quiet? Um, and just take that time and reflect and see if you can really see yourself there because a formal tour I think is a very good way to see the space. Um, sitting down in a, in a, a university is a good way to feel the space. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. Second piece of advice, do not be afraid to reach out to your admissions counselor. And I'm sure all of everybody in this video can also agree that is what we're here for as an admissions team is to help you through this process, give you the resources that you need um, to really make sure that you're making the right decisions and that you know everything um, that you should know about the university. So those are my two pieces for um, just the college search. Perfect. And University of Oregon. Yeah, I think all of my colleagues here, uh, you know, we all have great pieces of advice and everything that has said, I don't want to reiterate, but I definitely uh, ditto everything. But I do have two pieces of advice and Emma, you definitely stole mine, is connect with your admissions counselor because we are here to help you and make this as stress-free as possible. We, although are working for the university, we want to make sure that you are looking and seeing all of your resources for higher education to make this possible. And we're trying to make it accessible for you. So please reach out, connect with us. It's also a great way to get on a face-to-face -face and name-to-name -name basis. The second piece of advice is know what the college is looking for when you are applying. I think this is a huge opportunity for you to connect with your admissions counselor, but also learn, do they require SAT or ACT scores? Do they require an essay? See, all of us here within this presentation, I think we all have different application processes. So definitely connect with us and learn about all of our application admissions. 
Perfect. And Strathclyde, do you want to close us out with this question? Yeah, I might just offer a tip for students who are thinking about applying to the UK. Uh, the UK does have a common application form in the same way that the US does. It's called the UCAS form. And actually, every single UK university is on it. And students can use one application form and apply to up to five UK universities. It's also a really good resource just for your in initial uh, research. You can look up universities by major, by location, and by size, things like that. So it's a really fantastic resource kind of when you start your research, but then obviously when you go to apply as well. And I'll just put in the chat what that web address is. Beautiful. We are going to close out then for the evening because we are coming up to our time. So thank you all for joining us. All of our attendees, we are so grateful to have you here. All of our panelists, it was great to hear from all of you. When you close this window, there is going to be a quick four question survey. We would love your feedback. And again, just so you know, there are more, ses more sessions. We would love for you to register for more to learn about more great colleges. And in about a week, you can follow up with the recording here if you need to follow up with any one of our great people and haven't been able to get their contact information. All right, everyone, have a great night.